was peeking too early Your lack of buddies is a little concerning You heard the rumors, now I'm hearing confirming I made a friend in my thirties Welcome back to Jam Mechanics. My name is Matt Johnson. I'm from the act that you may have heard of, you might not have heard of, uh, The Narcissist Cookbook. With me in the Jamma Cabin is... It's Bug from Bug Hunter. You've heard of Bug Hunter. Illustrious, incomparable. Everybody's heard of Bug Hunter. Yeah, I think the news will have broken by now uh, that you are wanted uh, across <laughs> the world. Everyone's heard of Bug Hunter. Nobody knows where you are. The Jam Cabin is in international waters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jam Mechanics is a podcast uh, where Matt and I, uh, we're songwriters. Here's what we do. Uh, we're going to be challenged today to uh, write a song. We have a, a, uh, a jam consultant that will be arriving here at Jam Cabin here pretty soon. Uh, they're going to come in. They're going to give us a couple of uh, prompts that we're going to take. We're going to internalize them. We're going to go. And uh, in about three hours, we are going to have two new demos to show off to you. But before that, we got to get to know each other a little it's bit It's been better. so long and we don't know anything about each other. We're less than a month away from going on tour for, I don't know how many times we've done it. And it's like, we, do, we, we, we don't know each other. We got to ask these questions. I don't know a thing about Matt. It's so weird. We've spent so much time together. So we have a little segment here called Time to Get to Know Each Other, where we take uh, listener submitted questions. Uh, if you ever want to submit a question, uh, go to our Discord. You can find Discord link in the, uh, in the description of the podcast. And we have a little form there that you can uh, enter a question. Uh, so this one, Paul asks, you get a restaurant menu item inspired by and named after you. What is it? What's in it? And why? Uh, I, I, you know what? I kind of already have the usual and they don't even give me a menu anymore. I'm just like, you know what I want. Mm -hmm. uh, and I go into Nikki Tam's and I get a halloumi burger. I love my halloumi because mm -hmm. uh, I'm a vegetarian and it's kind of like meat. And also it is cheese. So those things are, it's, <laughs> what a bonus. They, they do actually just put it through as a Matt burger. On the, the, the Matt Burger. <laughs> they, put it, put it through, they put it through as a Matt Burger. On the, Oh, you know, actually, no, I've got it. What, what? The, tr the true Matt Burger, and they can't do this anymore, was a... Oh, God, this is, this is giving me palpitations just thinking about it. It was a halloumi burger. So, you know, bread bun, bread bun, halloumi burger with a tomato in there. Um, and then macaroni cheese mm. on top. Mm. of the halloumi so just like carb 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 dairy carb 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 dairy um and that wasn't on the menu for a long time it was on the menu then they took it off the menu and then i came in and i was just like puppy dog eyes and they said <laughs> okay you can just have it and that was the true matt burger and now they don't do any of that shit anymore so have you got a have you got a, like a regular i actually do have a restaurant menu item named after me at a real. Oh, you do. You I do, do. Do, do, do. I really do. Um, there, the uh, the previous drummer for Bug Hunter, uh, his name is Marcus. He uh, he was a drummer on the Rough Draft, and he moved uh, uh, from Seattle uh, back in like 2018 after we recorded that album. Went to go hype the Appalachian Trail for like a year. Um, and anyways, he settled. I think he got lost on the trail. He settled in Portland, Maine. Uh, never came back to Seattle, but he opened up a bar there called the Paper Tiger, and they had a. Um, a mocktail on their menu called the toddler with a slingshot. Uh, I think they've renamed, they've done a new one called the platonic best friend. Um, and there, there's always a mocktail on their menu named after me because I don't drink alcohol. And so Marcus in my honor has always had a, a bug hunter themed mocktail on the, uh, on the menu at paper tiger. So if you do happen to stop by um, Portland, Maine, and you wanted to uh, get a bug hunter inspired menu and potentially meet the drummer of the rough draft, uh, go to the paper tiger. It's a cool spot. Wait, did you ask me a question or did I ask you? you a question you asked me a question i asked you that question if you had to eat a liter of condiment without anything to accompany it what condiment would you eat and why this is a bad question lk i wish you hadn't That's okay so question. hold on i have to convert this to american a liter <laughs> i actually have no idea what is a gallon i gotta google this hold on yeah, it's like, it's like two bottles of Coke. Okay, not as bad as I... Okay, yeah, two liter. We do that. Uh, okay, so half of a two liter of a condiment. My choices being uh, ketchup, mustard, barbecue sauce. Garlic aioli? Like, you got so that many... That sounds too rich, uh, as opposed to all the other ones, which sound divine. Um, well, the other question is, like, do you have to be... 
like waterboarding yourself with this or can you just sort of do it yeah you can take up to i'm going to give you a time limit you can take up to an hour to do this so ketchup is kind of just like a sweet tomato soup if i put if i put myself in that mind space there's a potential i'm very specific about ketchup it has to be heinz ketchup and Mm. if it's not heinz ketchup it tastes uh, like bad uh so yeah i bought like 50 heinz ketchup sachets uh online (laughs) and then i would just carry one in my wallet and be like like, you want the condiments you did not carry a ketchup packet in your wallet every time you sit down just go Well, then I started carrying it in like the side thing in my backpack. The thing is, those sachets don't keep for very long. I think they're designed for industrial uh, environments, you know, where people are using 50 packets a day, not one packet every week or so. When you come to America, I'm going to get you a little holster for on both hip. You can keep little Heinz ketchup bottles. This is why I can't live in America, because that stereotype already exists in America. Whereas <laughs> here I'm breaking new ground. I'd want like, I wouldn't want it on my hips though. I'd want it like, like secret agent, like under my armpit. You got it. You got it uh, on the, the ankle. So when you- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can so search you- <laughs> me or like the, the desperado taxi driver that it's Assassin's Creed blade. You had to Perfect, remove a exactly. finger in order to, <laughs> Yeah, the Assassin's Creed blade, but it goes like shing, and then it just goes like, and then it goes like shing back in. That was my favorite X-Men, Wolverine's brother, uh, <laughs> who just set a claws coming out. It was just <laughs> squirts of cash. <laughs> he worked at McDonald's. So we are Jam Mechanics, and uh, we got a little special guest today uh, in the studio knocking at the door of the Jam McCabin. You may know him already as the lead guitarist, Stroke multi-instrumentalist of Bug Hunter and also Galloway and also God knows because this man is a musical uh, whirlwind. Yeah, this is this is Jesse Galloway. He's got his hand in pretty much everything. If you're eating a pie right now, chances are Jesse Galloway's fingers are in that pie. Uh, just to give a little, a quick little introduction to, to how I know Jesse, we met at an open mic in Seattle in like 2018. It was love at first sight. Uh, Jesse, say hi to our audience. Hi, audience. Uh, Jesse has his own band called Galloway, makes amazing music, and has been a a contributor to Bug Hunter since the Rough Draft. Basically, the very first practice that Jesse came on uh, came up with the breakdown in Disco in the Panic Room. It is now our most popular song that we've ever released, so immediate impact in the band. Uh, Plays bass, plays kazoo, plays guitar, plays piano, uh, plays a little ukulele. Uh, You are here today to give us some prompts. But before we do that, uh, we have an icebreaker question for you. Are oh, you are you cool to play with us? Yeah, why not? One thing I know about Jesse is uh, when we go on tour, you have a you have a nose. You you will always find us the best food. Uh, yeah. No, like Somehow. no matter what city we're in, you will find it. We rely on you. Yeah, you will just be like standing on a corner, and you'll just be like, "There's a Thai place two blocks." From <laughs> you. That's the best Thai you've ever had in your entire life, and we're going immediately. Uh, so Brooke asks, best best and or worst thing you've eaten while on tour? Oh gosh, on tour. Well, I'm I'm partial because, uh, and this is funny with Papa Bug, but we were in Vegas, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a chain that I'm really familiar with in San Diego called Tacos El Gordo. Mm-hmm. And they had uh, Southern California locations, but they also had some Vegas locations. I was a bit skeptical, right? We all got back to an Airbnb and Papa Bug's like, I'm hungry, I want to get food. And I'm like, well, I have an idea. Mm-hmm. I was trying to undersell it because I hadn't been to this particular location, but... Uh, we go, we bring back food, and he takes a bite, and he's like, I am so mad that you undersold this. This is mm-hmm. the best food that I have had. <laughs> yeah. No, the thing is, like, you and you and Papa Bug are, like, such a good team for food because mm-hmm. he is just, like, a relentless hype man. But I feel like if you give Papa Bug something that's even just slightly above average, he'll be like, this is the fucking, me. he wouldn't well, say fucking, <laughs> oh, this yeah. is the best thing I've ever eaten in my entire life. And it's just, like, you guys just, like, really wind mm-hmm. each other up with food, and it's incredible to see. My sister has a rule in our family that my dad is only allowed to talk about how much he loves any particular meal three times. Once he said, this is the best thing I've ever eaten three times, he is not allowed to talk about it anymore. Uh, it's like a daily problem uh, in, in the house. So uh, Jesse and my dad uh, are like best of friends on the road for that reason. You know, I, I really do believe there's going to be a point in the li- in my life where we're just doing a cooking show or it's just the two of us, like an <laughs> like, off spin of, the, Jesse, of this I universe. Watch that so much. <laughs> Can we can we tell can we tell the uh, the Chicago deep dish pizza 
story <laughs> i think we have to we got done with the merch line and we realized that we all of course want a deep dish pizza but it takes a while to make and no, no one had taken the initiative to actually order it before like when the show ended because we have like an hour and a half after the show ends before we can finally like get out of the venue and so we order it but it's going to take a while we've been kicked out of the venue at this point but we can't leave because the pizza is coming to the venue so we're in the van outside the venue it's 11 30 at night and we're just waiting we're waiting we're just like all right this pizza's gonna show up any minute now it finally does there is zero cutlery there is zero plates there is zero napkins it's just a box with pizza in it and it's not been cut as well yeah i was gonna say that's the caveat it's also an uncut pizza yes there's zero slices it's a one slice pizza and so my father papa bug <laughs> i'd forgotten about this <laughs> My father, uh, my dad has a pocket knife that he, it's a, let me be clear. This is not a food knife. This is a pocket knife. This is an everything knife. This is a general uh -huh. purpose knife. You're having to cut cable ties and things like that. You cable tie up the cables, boxes. It makes sense to have a knife, right? But this is not a food grade knife. It's just a pocket knife. And he was like, oh, the pizza's uncut. Shrink. <laughs> yeah. And, he, and I'm like, dad. <laughs> That's your knife that you use for everything. You've never washed it, ever. I've seen you lick it and then put it back into your pocket. Which is weird because you never use it for food. No, I don't know why you do it. It's kind of like when you try to intimidate people and you just lick the edge of the knife. You know, oh, you do that no. uh, Are you on the guest list? Uh, and uh, he was like, I'll cut the pizza with my 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 dirty knife uh, and basically the entire band vetoed that move and to this day <laughs> he thinks we're all a bunch of babies for not letting him use his his weird ass knife to cut our pizza with we ended up finding a plastic set of cutlery in the glove compartment and um, which did not work it did not work we basically just like a bunch of animals just tore at the pizza until we had some in our hands and ate it, it was assisted tearing for sure we evolved over millions of years to be able to absolutely disembowel this Chicago <laughs> deep dish pizza at midnight on a the on a curbside, you know, with our bare hands. And it was delicious. Ten out of ten, it great so experience. Good. So yes, good. yeah, loved we'll it. do again. Yeah. Uh, Jesse, this is something that we ask everybody. What's your jam? What's uh, what's a song or artist that you've been listening to recently that you want to tell uh, tell our audience about? Give them a little shout out. Are you both familiar with the band Wolves of Glendale? Yes. yes. Yeah. Are you familiar with the song Olivia? Yes. No. It's so will, good. No. Bug, okay. You need to listen to it. Because, yeah, I am a, a huge fan of, like, the... A couple things I like are like the 80s synth pop kind of mm -hmm. genre, but also anything with horns. I like a good brass section, you know, but this particularly, it gave me like the newer, the 1975 vibes, mm -hmm. but Olivia is just the storytelling is so great. I don't want to spoil it, but okay. um, I yeah. highly recommend it. It's, it's it's good, witty storytelling. I loop like the first two verses religiously. Speaking of two great verses, uh, let's get down to jam mechanics. Here we go. All right. So here's, here's how this is going to work. Uh, Jesse has uh, brought to the table today two prompts jesse's going to pose both of these prompts to us it's not a matt picks one i pick one it is we are going to discuss which of the two prompts we both want to leap off of um and just kind of gives us a little bit of wiggle room make sure that we're feeling creative about um uh, about things going into the break uh so with that in mind jesse uh give us a little bit of entropy here uh what's uh, what's prompt one for us today my prompt one as vague as it is it's going to be not in this lifetime I'm not going to explain myself. Not in that this lifetime. That could be a few lifetime. different things. Not in this lifetime. Not in okay. this lifetime. Okay. Yeah. All right. I've, I'm already twisting it. I'm already... I, uh, it's meant to be twisted. Mm -hmm. I think when I when I frame this one, uh, there's a very literal one, but there's mm -hmm. two ways to spin it. So I, I think this might be good for this kind of format. But... Yeah, Jesse, give us that, give us that second prompt. Yeah. It's going to be training arc. Training arc. So like you are, you're, you're getting better, you're improving... That kind of mentality. Okay. You know? Like a, mm. like training montage. Uh, that comes to mind. Doesn't have to be specifically a montage, but yeah, just the self-improvement, getting better training. Okay. That is a concept. I instantly think um, Mulan. I think... <laughs> Uh, I went to the anime route, and I was thinking like some some training arcs with like I'm, uh, demons. I'm, I'm right. Yeah. I'm watching Mulan in my mind's eye at this moment. I've never seen Mulan, so I'm watching uh, Bill and Ted's. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one yeah. the one that the 
like not in this lifetime resonates with me that sort of like it taps into themes that i go into quite a lot uh training arc feels like i would struggle not to make it a sort of throwaway comedy song um i think that's where i'm at too i think um in my head a uh, training arc i want to subvert training arc and that makes me want to write a stupid comedy song uh that spoofs the idea of a training montage um, yeah but the thing is i think that 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 comedy song has been done so many times yes already. Uh, that's what i think too i think i don't have anything to add beyond exactly what you're imagining right now that's There's a montage yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah uh so i think i think i'm good for not in this not lifetime in this lifetime yeah, yeah. Okay, we're gonna take we're gonna take three hours um, to to work on these songs. Jesse, thank you so much for uh, coming in here with with your prompts, getting our our um, brain juices ready to be milked, as Matt likes to say. I don't like saying it. You love saying it. Every- <laughs> no, no, I was I say it a lot, but every time I say it, I hate it. Like I'm not. <laughs> Jesse, do you have anything that you would like to let our audience know about things going on in your world? I want to I want to tell people to listen to NFO by mm-hmm. by Galloway. That's I love that song so much. That's on my when I when I do the music for events uh, and when when we were on tour, that is on our tour playlist. It's mm-hmm. playing through the speakers before shows. Uh, you can throw a dartboard at a at a at your computer monitor and, <laughs> and, and hit, <laughs> hit any Galloway song. Uh, go buy a new monitor. Uh, and then, uh, whatever, whatever song it lands on, it's going to be a great one. Uh, but yeah, so I'll, I'll plug Galloway right now. If you're not listening to Galloway, you need to go listen to Galloway. Um, great, like funky, but like there's so much variety in all the music you make. Uh, anything else, anything specific you want to tell people about? Um, yeah, the next song is going to be out on June 14th. I'm working on promotion stuff, but I mean, that'll be right at the end of tour. So I'm going to probably be in the tour van on my laptop Mm -hmm. editing little promotional videos. We're going to be in Boise. uh, And if you're coming to Boise, bring Bring a cake. Bring a happy release day. Cake. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to end it with uh, I'm thankful to know both of you and like we've become great friends over this time. Aww. And yeah, I, this is really cool to see you all doing this and you're challenging yourselves, you know, and I love that. So um, thanks ah. for having me and I'm excited to see what y'all come up with. Appreciate that, Woo! bud. Thank you. Uh, let's do it. Let's swan dive into the abyss. Friend in my 30s. Yeah! And we are back from the break. Uh, welcome back to Jam Mechanics. Welcome back, everybody. How are you feeling? I'm feeling frustrated. Why are you frustrated, Matt? Uh, I just, I did a, I got a whole song. I actually really like the song. I think it's a bit derivative, but I like the the, the core of the song. And I have no hook. I just get to the, I, I, I was just sitting at the chorus for like a full hour, just going, and, ugh. And it's just nothing. There's no fail state for jam mechanics. If you didn't listen to season one, we said this a lot. We're here to just get ideas on paper. Uh, yeah. So you don't have to write an entire song uh, during during the break of jam mechanics. If you come up with a chorus that you can come back and show off, that is a success for the day. Uh, anyways, yeah. are you ready to, show, ready to show off some songs? Yeah, I want to hear. I want to hear your song. So a reminder of the prompt, uh, Jesse, uh, Jesse Galloway of Galloway of Bug Hunter uh, came into uh, Jam a Cabin and uh, plopped down on the table, not in this lifetime. And I had an idea. This one's kind of a bummer. Okay. It's, it's a little bit of a bummer. Uh, I, I don't know if this story relates to the song I'm about to show you, but in my head it does. Um, I went to a little like animal fair like puppies and chickens and stuff over the over the weekend with ladybug so there was i there was these little little kuna kuna pigs they were so cute and ladybug was like do you want to take a picture with the little piggies and i was like absolutely so i get down on the ground and i'm like playing with the pigs and she takes pictures of me with the pigs and then she shows them to me later and here's the thing i'm 32 years old my um my bald spot is more prominent than the last time i checked (laughs) <laughs> and I found that out via these pictures. Oh no! And so I had just kind of like this. Okay, yeah, the on the the endless march of time 
uh, no, no reversing it. Um, it's tough. You know, you know, the thing about a bald spot is it's sort of like someone it's, 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 it's a, the equivalent is like someone putting a kick me sign. It is like having a kick me sign on your back. Not be, like, there's nothing wrong with having a bald spot. There's nothing wrong with bald ism, but it's something like, it's like a secret that everybody around me has known that I yeah. have not known. Right. It's just, it's, it's just also like generally, you know, it's like, it's been on your back for like 18 months. Yeah. <laughs> before, and, yeah. And no, and nobody will tell you. No, nobody will just like of tap you on the not. shoulder. When was right? the last time, when was the last time you went up to someone and was like, Hey, you're bald. You're bald. <laughs> exactly. So I wanted to interrupt you in the middle of that story and say, okay, well, you know, we're going to have to see those pictures, but I, I'm, I, my yeah. understanding is that those pictures will not be seeing the light of day. It's a, uh, it's half forever from now on. I guess we're, 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 <laughs> oh, no. we're in half forever. Um, so that was kind of my f- mood when writing this song. This one. I'm okay. Now you have hooked me in the sense that I cannot comprehend where you might be going with this. Yeah. None of that story is in this song, but that was my mindset, I think, when I was writing it. Um, my song is called uh, Crickets in Silence. Um, mm. For eagle-eyed listeners, uh, I did, because I had um, my good my good friend and bandmate, Jesse Galloway, uh, on the call earlier, you will notice something in this in this song that is um, sounds very unlike me in a normal jam mechanics demo i had a little help with this one uh so see if you can spot it this song's called crickets in silence on a one a two a one two three four I'm just a little guy, a little wooden guy, a little puppet I know you know, you know how the story goes I was a little guy, a little wooden guy But I'm a real boy now, and I am finding out That nothing could prepare me I'm like Peter Parker's pediatrician In over my head, and I admit it (laughs) With human flesh and skin and all the mess that comes with it Oh, I was young and dumb and now I'm stuck Dad, can you come pick me up? I'm just a little guy, a little human guy Applying bandages to manage So damn easy to damage it yeah. That little wooden guy, that tough-skinned kid Could take a hit and keep running This fragile man I'm becoming This is his 80-grit blanket And the ocean right outside of my bedroom And making choices just to see where they led to But now adventures are a threat to every moment I get I look around for guidance Our bravest days behind us We'll never be so bold again With mortal bones and fragile skin Ooh, play it, Jesse Find this. It's like Willy Wonka's wine cellar Yeah, I guess I should have known better Should have known that growing up is forever But now we can't go back I look around for guidance Our bravest days behind us We'll never be so bold again With mortal bones and fragile skin I look around for guidance And all I hear Is crickets and silence Yeah, no, I love that. Thanks. I love that. The the I am such a fan of that melody that's like it just keeps going and going and I love that. That that's that's one of my favorite kinds of melodies and you nail oh, it there. Thank thank you. Yeah. Uh what's an 80 grit blanket? <laughs> uh that is a reference to sandpaper. Um you you measure uh sandpaper in grit. So 80 grit, 100 okay. grit. It's like the roughness of the sandpaper and uh it's, uh, it's, I hope it's very clear that this is a Pinocchio-based song, um, Little Wooden Boy. Uh, and so 80-grit uh, blanket uh, was a little bit of imagery um, yep. 
Um, I, you know what I'm going to say? I think you should put that I was young and dumb and now I'm stuck. Dad, can you come pick me up in there at least one more time? I, you, you got, you got I know. <laughs> I know. It barely got in there once. I, I even thought, I was like, Matt's not going to like that. I'm only going to do this once. But <laughs> I didn't I didn't really have another spot for it um, because I kind of move, once I hit the actual chorus of the song, uh, I kind of move past uh, the silliness, I guess, of it. Um, and yeah. I just didn't feel like there was another like opportune spot for that. So it felt like a cool little... No, idea. I like that a lot. It's also, yeah, that's darker than you normally go. Yeah. Uh, mortal bones and fragile skin is getting into me territory. <laughs> it's a red flag, bug. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I feel like the unintentional comedy of this song is that now I know that this came from, ooh, I saw my bald spot. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I, so this song is not about that. It's just kind of the pun intended headspace that I was kind of in. For me, it's about getting older and getting more cautious yeah. and not, not being willing to take uh, the risks that you were willing to take when you were a kid. Uh, for me, the, the example I always give is, I'm done skiing. Oh, God, yeah. I skied when I was a kid and thought it was a blast. I went skiing when I was like 28, 29, and I was like, I could die at any moment, and this isn't worth it to me. I'm going to go back to the lodge. And there's, I'm sure there's tons of people who are like, you're being a weenie bug. That's fine. It just like my, my internals was like, I don't enjoy this enough to, yeah. uh, to risk the thing that could happen if I'm just like going really fast, and then I just fall over. And I was like, not worth it for me. It, it is, it's different when you're small. Like, you literally yeah. just don't hit the ground as hard. When I was yeah. a kid, I used to just, we used to just jump out of windows uh, for fun and excitement. <laughs> and then we'd be like, maybe we can jump out of, like, the second story window just yeah. for fun and excitement. And I'd just be like, let's see, <laughs> let's oh, yeah. see how high we can go before one of us gets, breaks a leg, which heals in 35 minutes, you know? Yeah, exactly. So this, this whole thing was meant to be uh, uh, Pinocchio's, uh, remorse of wishing to be a real boy and all of the the fragility that comes with that when he was a little wooden guy uh you know he was just like get nicks and cuts but whatever it's fine uh now that he can bleed and is mortal uh he has to be more careful and he can't just go on little adventures uh, and that's that's what not in this lifetime unlocked for me when when jesse kind of gave me that prompt was the things that you know, as time progresses, uh, I am no longer going to be like in the same like mindset to do. Um, and just things that you can't recapture from, from, from being a kid being young. So, uh, I know it's kind of a bummer, but that's, that's where I kind of got with this song and I'm happy with it, uh, and what it is. Well, when I thought about not in this lifetime, I thought about death. I thought about, uh, uh, I thought about the end of things. I thought about, about I, I thought about love coming to a close, but maybe it's not necessarily the close. The song's called uh, "The Nature of Forms," mm -hmm. and uh, this is like for starters, this is the most. This is so there are no overdubs. It's literally live with a ukulele because I spent so long trying to get the chorus that I just gave up. Okay. And had no time to do anything except be like, -a 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 -do. Um, anything else you want to say before we hit go? Um, no. Hit and go in three, two, one, go. When the space between the spaces starts to strain, when the puzzle pieces bend and don't quite fit in the same way. When the molecules that make us lose their charge and break apart under their weight When the North Star doesn't point north anymore When the constellations drift and leave us stranded on the shore when the suns have all gone supernova Freeze and then retreat into their cores If there's an after that comes after the before If after all of everything there's still a little something more And after all our time together we're both still on board 
burden What if Plato had a point about ideals? If the nature of a form is born in an Elysian field And the parts of us that we call I could maybe one day recollide somewhere Then I will find you where a Nanke wound the spool at the source of all the rivers, at the end of all the worlds In the wreckage of the species, I will question every beast residing there If there's an after that comes after the before if there's some truth to all those stories I have mocked and sneered and scorned And after all our time together, we're both still on board I'm 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 really happy with some of the lyrics. I think the verses are great. I think the verses are great. Um, I wish I just had something after after all our time together. We were both still on board, and I also wish it didn't feel so much like a rewrite of "I Will Follow You Into the Into the Dark." By I I, I got vibes of that. You can't write a better song than that. Like on this topic. But having said that, there's there's a lot of great um lines here. The one that stuck out to me on first listen was yes, and all the parts of us that we call I could maybe one day recollide. As yeah. usual when I write a line, I'm just like bugs going to like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh because yeah. it it brain bent me a little bit um because I read it as and the parts of us that we call I could maybe one day recollide. And I was like, well, you know, that doesn't make sense. And then I was like, okay. And the parts of us that we call I could maybe one day recollide. And I was like, ah, yes. Okay. And also trying to work out what, if there is an after that comes after the before means, I was like, is that now? Is that, is that, no, it's tomorrow after before. (laughs) (laughs) And I think that's just fun. I think those are fun little kind of uh, brain teasers in songs that, at the end of the day, they don't really need to mean anything. They just, they vibe. I, I think that there is a version of this song that doesn't stray quite so close to that other song. And I think there is a version of this song that has a satisfying hook, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, but as it stands, like, I really, I love when the North Star doesn't point north anymore and when the mm-hmm. constellations drift and leave us standing on the shore. I love the bit about Plato. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the, I think the bit about Ananke is a bit, um, wanky. Uh, if you if you if you didn't pick up on that reference, that's a reference to a track that I that is on my first album. Uh, Ananke being the the Orphic god of fate, who who weaves who weaves uh, at the the loom of fate. And I needed something. And can I make a confession? Yeah. For a very long time, I thought loom of fate was a one word. <laughs> who weaves at the loom of fate? <laughs> who weaves the loom of fate? <laughs> and I didn't know what that meant, but I thought it sounded so cool until I finally looked up the lyrics like six months ago. And I was like, ah, loom of fate. <laughs> well, I'm, it means a lot to me that you would look up the lyrics at all. Well, I wanted to know what a loom of fate was. <laughs> <laughs> she was just going to, going to Greek scholars and being yeah. like, Could you, can you tell me what a loom of fate is? I'm so, I so want a loom of fate. I think I want one to decorate the downstairs. Uh, I, the Ananke reference made me be like, Narcissus Cookbook, Cinematic Universe. Yeah, of course. I'm always trying to build a little cinematic universe. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm happy with what that is. I wish yeah. it had come out slightly different. I wish it had come out uh, a bit more complete, but I can imagine coming back to that in six months, a year, mm-hmm. five years, ten years, and going, oh, I know what to do with this. 
Yeah. Like you clearly, you clearly had a vision. Like I, I see your vision. It's so well laid out. Um, I, I, we're at, we're at the end of time. Right. And it's, you know, you and me, right. You and me together. End of time. Me like, and me bug. You and me, you and me specifically, the two of us <laughs> end of time still here making jam mechanics <laughs> in the jam mechanics Luma fate. <laughs> Really looking for special guests, really struggling for special guests here at the end of time. Any amoeba that passes by. Any, just hey, what's your old... jam, amoeba? <laughs> What's it come back? It's Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, jam mechanics. No such thing as failure. Impossible to fail. Um, thank you to Jesse, Jesse Galloway, for hopping on and, and giving us our prompt today. Um, if, you, if you like these songs, they're going to be up for uh, download on jammechanics.com or www jammechanics.bandcamp.com. You can go and grab those right now, right this moment. They're, they're uh, pay what you want to download, so if you want to throw some support, you can. Otherwise, um, feel free to download those bad boys and, and load them onto your phone. Uh, if you want to email us... You can email us. Hello at jammechanics.com or bug at jammechanics.com or tnc at jammechanics.com. Anything else? Uh, yeah, come and join our Discord. You want to join the Jam Mechanics Discord or you want to join the Bug Hunter or Narcissist Cookbook Discord. Uh, at the very least, the Jam Mechanics Discord link will be below in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Um, or you can just message us, uh, mm-hmm. which is, that's probably the safest way of doing it. And uh, yeah, we'll be back in, uh, I think by the time this releases, we will almost be done. No, by the time this releases... Where will we be? We will have just finished up our our June tour. So uh, Mm. if you live on the West Coast and you're just hearing this, uh, I hope you had a good time in a show. Or I'm sorry that you missed uh, that we were just in town. Uh, We're going to be in the Midwest on the East Coast uh, in August and September. If you want uh, tickets to our... It's not not a Jam Mechanics tour, uh, but it is a Bug Hunter and the Narcissus Cookbook tour going around playing our our original music. Uh, We're going to be in like Boston and Chicago and and Dallas and Florida. So uh, if you want uh, details about that, go to www.bughunterbug.com and you you can find all the ticket links there for August and September. And by now, obviously, you will have heard about the that thing I said on stage at Seattle that got me, like, booed a mm-hmm. lot. But, um, you know, it won't happen again. And, uh, you know, I'm seeking help. I stand by you and what you said. And whatever you said, I endorse 100%. And I, d- <laughs> I don't apologize. You said what everyone was thinking. <laughs> you have free reign to just ruin me now. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us uh, at Jam Mechanics. Uh, That is the end of episode three. And we will see you in episode, as is tradition, four. Matt, you got a little jingle for us? Oh, shit. (laughs) Somehow forgets. Okay. (laughs) If there's an after that comes after the before. If after all of everything, there's still a little something more After all our time together, we're still both on board Mm -hmm. Boners, no! God, that's can't do it. You I was really to use our outro music moment. to fix your song. <laughs> <laughs> they always told me I was peaking too early. Your lack of buddies is a little concerning. You heard the rumors, now I'm hearing confirming. I made a friend in my thirties. <laughs>